Vanus Enigma, English, Espanol. In this video mix number 81, I want to talk about hashtag Let's Talk FE and the frequency of 432 hertz music. En este video mix número 81 quiero hablar sobre el hashtag Let's Talk FE y sobre frecuencia 432 de música. Several months ago I made already a video about that topic. 432 hertz frequency ya hace algunos meses he hecho un video sobre este tema de 432 hertz hertzios como se dice en español I think it was in May this year 2015 because I just remember my mother visited me here in Gran Canaria. Eh, me parece que era en mayo de este año 2015 porque mi madre me estaba visitando aquí en Gran Canaria. By the way, she was sharing an apartment with one friend and she was very into numerology. 432 hertz. Ella estaba visitando, bueno, con una amiga compartiendo bungalow y ella eh, hablaba del tema de numerología eh, 432 hertz, etc. I talked with her a little, but she didn't know about this number 432. Hablé un poco con ella, pero ella no sabía de ese número 432 Hz. So before I made that video, I watched many other videos about that topic. Antes de hacer ese video, he mirado muchos otros videos sobre ese tema. And I remember one YouTube channel. In the description, they had um, a very detailed explanation about this number 432. Um, Recuerdo un canal de YouTube que tenía una explicación muy detallada sobre ese número de 432. But now, after that hashtag Let's Talk FE, Flat Earth, I think it's time to re review this topic. Pero uh, ahora, después de el eh, hashtag Let's Talk FE, eh, me parece que es hora de revisar ese tema de 432 Hz. Eh, perdón, se me olvidó de mencionar hashtag Let's Talk FE. Tierra Plana. Because I remember um, in that description um, they start from the opinion that the earth is a ball, has the form of a ball. Porque compiensan con la tesis que uh, la Tierra es o un globo o fo tiene forma de globo o de pelota si quieres decir pelota jugando con la pelota 
and they talk about the distance to the sun and the moon and um, hablan de la distancia de hasta la el sol y la luna and the size of sun and moon y el tamaño de sol y luna and of course are the size of the earth y por supuesto el tamaño de la tierra and comparing different videos about this topic 432 hertz uh, they often like to show uh, the universe and the planet and the globe y comparando muchos videos sobre este tema de 432 Hz tengo que decir que muchos les gusta enseñar imágenes de fondo de planeta, universo y espacio it seems that Nikola Tesla was very aware of the importance of frequency and vibration. Parece que Nikola Tesla era muy consciente del tema de frecuencia y vibración. Did you see in my last video, number 80? Um, in the first minutes they make experiment with salt and vibration the different geometric forms it has visto in my video ultimo video numero 80 hacen un experimento con sal y la frecuencia y formas ge geométricas que hace so in this video i really mainly want to talk about this uh, 432 hertz but with the new eyes of hashtag let's talk fe bueno so en este video quiero hablar principalmente sobre el tema de 432 hz pero con los nuevos ojos de Hashtag Let's Talk FE. So only in the end of the video I'll paste one short video of five minutes about about this flat earth. Hashtag Let's Talk FE. Bueno, solo en los últimos cinco minutos Voy a pegar un video sobre el tema de hashtag Let's Talk FE en Tierra Plana. Do you know what these two topics have in common? Let's Talk FE and 432 Hertz. Sabes lo que tienen en común estos dos temas, Let's Talk FE y 432 Hz. These both topics got attention especially in times of the Second World War. Estos dos temas atraeron atención especialmente en los tiempos de la Segunda Guerra Mundial. Mind Manipulation Manipulación de la mente Government Mind Control Gobierno Control de la mente Control mental uh, the most important to know about this 432 Hz is it's a harmonic frequency a natural frequency compared to that frequency was introduced especially by I think Adolf Hitler or Nazi people 
uh, which raised the frequency to 440 hertz. Lo más importante pa, por saber sobre el tema de 432 Hz es que es una frecuencia natural, armónica, en comparación que de la frecuencia que introducieron los nazis que subieron la frecuencia a 440 Hz. In relation to the importance of music, I want to mention Tomorrowland. En relación de la importancia de la música, quiero mencionar el Tomorrowland. I often compare the amounts of such results in Google about different hashtags. This time, for example, Tomorrowland or Let's Talk FE. A menudo comparo la cantidad de resultados de búsqueda en Google de diferentes hashtags, en este caso Tomorrowland y por ejemplo Let's Talk, hashtag Let's Talk FI. I made a screenshot, you see there are a lot of research results. He hecho una captura de pantalla y ya ves que es hay una cantidad tremenda de resultados de búsqueda. Maybe later I make another video especially about Tomorrowland. But this time I really want to focus on this 432 hertz frequency. Tal vez otro día voy a hacer otro video sobre el tema de Tomorrowland. Pero esta vez de verdad quiero concentrarme en el tema de 432 hertz vibración frecuencia. For some people or some time of my life, uh, video is like, uh, sorry, <laughs> music is like a drug. Now it's video for me. <laughs> Para alguna gente y algún tiempo en, vidi en mi vida, eh, la música es como una droga. Eh, para mí ahora es el video, los videos, YouTube. Addiction, adicción. So now I'll paste three videos, one about uh, 432 hertz frequency, then about um, BTC4 Bitcoin, and in the end about Let's Talk FE Flat Earth. Ahora a continuación voy a pegar tres videos, uno va sobre el 432 hertzios frecuencia, luego el BTC4 Bitcoin y al final el hashtag Let's Talk FE de sobre tierra plana. What Confucius meant about the quality of music when he says it's based upon the quality of its music, he wasn't talking about what kind of genre the music was in. He wasn't talking about whether it was rap or country, rock and roll, gospel or jazz. What he was referring to when he meant the, the, uh, uh, the quality of its music was what frequency was that music being played in and what mathematical intervals was, that, was the, uh, the difference between the, uh, the frequencies. You see, that was absolutely crucial for thousands of years during the Chinese dynasties. 
the emperors would send out teams of people all over the kingdom to make sure that the that the uh, the people were playing music in the rock in the right frequencies, the proper frequencies with the proper intervals. They had strict guidelines about the music that was being played because the emperor knew that if you had different factions of different kingdoms playing different types of music, different frequencies of music, that all those different realms would soon be at strife and, and against one another. So it was imperative that the entire kingdom played music in, in tune with one another, and they set specific and strict guidelines of, of what frequency was this music to be played at. So 2,500 years, uh, uh, or actually 4,500 years ago, the Chinese were using uh, the vibration of music uh, to control the people. Now let's fast forward to today. Now what do we know about today's music? What do we know about what tuning our music is in and where did this tuning come from? The intention of this video is to improve your knowledge of musical vibration. I mean, what do we really know about music? The air vibration of its sounds are physical and measurable, yes. We know that a singer can shatter a glass with their trained voice. Troops marching across a bridge in unison have been known to collapse that bridge unless they break their rhythm before marching across it. Even subsonic vibrations which precede an earthquake can cause animals to become disoriented, thus driving them from the area. I mean, we are dealing with a very impressive force. Today, extensive research has shown that music can speed or slow your heart rate, relax or jar your nerves, affect your blood pressure, digestion, even your rate of respiration. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you that music can also affect your emotions and desires. It can have a very significant influence on your mental processes and, in turn, can influence an entire society as the Chinese knew over 4,000 years ago. So, where did the frequency of today's music come from? Just about the entire modern world uses the standard concert pitch of A equals 440 hertz. Now, what this means is, on a piano, for example, the A above middle C is tuned to 440 hertz. Then all the rest of the notes uh, are tuned around this frequency. But the problem with this is, there's absolutely nothing harmonious, either biologically or cosmically, with the 440 hertz frequency. So why are we using it? In many cultures, this tone is used in connection with sacred rituals. In India, this tone is called Saja, father of others, and the sitar and tambora are tuned accordingly. In Sufism, it is said, the one who knows the secret of this tone knows the mystery of the universe. The shamanic festival use of a specific series of drums, trumpets, and harps in ancient Sumeria had them all tuned to 432 hertz. The original Stradivarius violin was designed to be tuned to 432 hertz as well. The archaic Egyptian instruments that have been unearthed so far are largely tuned to 432 hertz. 432 hertz touches the full 12 scale octave overtones of all music in creation, whereas 440 hertz only touches 8 octave overtones, leaving out an entire section of the complete musical resonance of the universe. The diameter of the moon is 2,160 miles, which is 432 times 5. The diameter of the sun is 864,000 miles, which is 432,000 times 2. The precession of the zodiac equinoxes takes 25,920 years, or simply 432 times 60. Half of a day, or 12 hours, is 720 minutes, or 432,000 seconds. The harmonic 6 of the 432 is 720 hertz. There are 432 Buddha statues in Mount Meru and 72 stupas. A healthy athletic adult at rest has an average heartbeat of 60 beats per minute, so 60 times 60 minutes in an hour times 24 hours in a day equals 86,400 beats per day, which is 43,200 times 2. Now even one of the world's largest sporting goods manufacturers produces a special series of golf balls that Tiger Woods uses that features a 432 dimple configuration. How do they come to that? Well, several decades ago, a group of engineers inputted all the various parameters of golf ball design into a computer in order to determine the optimum amount of dimples on the surface, which can effectively reduce drag and give more loft and distance to the ball. It is obvious not only to Nike, but to other leading sporting good manufacturers as well that the acoustical geometry of the 432 allows for optimal harmonic performance. So they obviously knew that the 432 was embedded in the very workings of the cosmos. For example, it takes 25,920 years for a complete procession of the equinoxes. That's one complete cycle of the zodiac. Today we are leaving the age of Pisces and entering the age of Aquarius, so there are 12 ages in one 25,920 year cycle. 
and if you multiply the 432 by, by 60, you get 25,920. This is an important point because 60 is the base measurement of how we count time. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, etc. It was also the base counting system for the ancient Sumerians. So, the precession of the equinoxes and the 432 literally are revealing the timing of the pulse of life. These fractal cosmic relationships are ingrained into every experience all life forms have. It is the reason behind why the builders at Mount Meru put only 432 Buddha statues. Simply, our higher consciousness is being harmonically inspired to acoustically resonate with the overall frequency of the cosmos. Now, for example, let's take one of the most infamous numbers in the Bible, the 666, which is said to be the number of man. And let's look at a quote by the ancient philosopher Pythagoras, which states, Man is two octaves below God. Now, if we go back to the 666, and what if we uh, interpret that to mean 6 times 6 times 6? If we do that, we get 216, which is half of the 432, or one octave below the 432. So if man is the 216, then the 432 would represent enlightened consciousness by the 432 Buddha statues. Then one octave above would be 864, or the level of God. So the 432 is the vibrational level we are all moving towards. So according to the ancient Christian text, the Creator spoke through the authors of the Bible, and they simply wrote the words down. So if these are the actual words of God, then encoded in them could be some hidden patterns or even possibly some deeper insight into the underlying messages. When studying this topic, it turns out that a man named Vernon Jenkins found exactly that. In 1987, Mr. Jenkins, a well-respected lecturer at the University of Glamorgan, developed a system to reveal hidden patterns found within the original Hebrew text of Genesis. His process was to transpose the numerical value of the letters using the Arabic numeral system. He then used those numbers to determine a certain quantity of geometries, and his results were simply stunning. What you're seeing right now in this first uh, graphic is a 216 unit outline triangle, and I actually replicated his work in a graphics program to see if, if he was correct, to verify his work. And in this graphic depiction, you see 216 unit, 216 uh, squares or boxes that are all lined up perfectly to create a 216 unit outline triangle. So what Vernon Jenkins did was, he took the first words of Genesis 1 through 7 in this graphic, and you see in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Now in the beginning represents to uh, 913, Elohim 86. Now there's some contention about whether Elohim or God or the same thing is, is a difference uh, in translation. but Created is 203, and the asterisk you see it represents 401, which doesn't have a direct uh, translation in English. The heaven is 395, and 407, the earth 296, which equals 2701. So in the original 216 outline triangle, we can fill that perfectly with 2701 units of the same outline. And in the next one, words 6 and 7, and the earth have a numerical equivalent of 703. And in this graphic, you see a 703 triangle inset in the original 216 outline triangle. But one of the things to note is that all of the resultant three yellow triangles that you see all have 666 units each, which I thought was pretty interesting. The next group, we have words four through eight, the heaven and the earth and the earth, which has a numerical value in Hebrew of 1801. In this graphic, we see an 1801 hexagon inset in the original 216 outline triangle. And one of the other things to note is that each side has 25 units, the perimeter is 144 units, and there are 49 rows, which all are perfect squares. The next one comes from Genesis 1-2, words 2 through 8, which states, was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The numerical value of this is 1875, or 625 times 3, which gives us three 625 rhombus insets. Next, words 2 through 8 of Genesis 1-2, and the spirit of the Elohim moved on the face of the waters. This has a numerical equivalent of 1369, or 37 times 37. This gives us a 1369 rhombus inset, still perfectly in the 216 outline triangle. So this is hinting towards a whole new level of interrelatedness of everything within our reality. That something as simple as words and something as seemingly opposite as geometry have something in common. They begin with sound. All sciences ultimately derive from vibration. Complex physics distills down into math and from math, geometry. But you can also create geometry from vibration. This cymatics experiment is used by researchers to visualize related geometric patterns that specific frequencies create. It consists of a speaker playing a frequency underneath a thin metal sheet holding ordinary sand. As you can see, the sand is responding to the sound it is receiving and creating a geometric pattern that is particular to the individual frequency. 
you will notice that the sand is only creating defined geometric patterns in response to Pythagorean interval of the 432. This image is taken from John Stuart Reed's cymatic experiment conducted to show the geometry that the pure 432 hertz tone creates. The triangular shaped hole in the middle is created by the 432 hertz sound and it is in this exact shape of what is known as the trion ray, rediscovered by Michael R. Evans. It is the smallest platonic solid that represents a single pulse of light of spirit in 3D. This three-sided shape tessellates to create all the rest of the platonic solids. This shows that the 432 is in acoustical and structural harmony with the pulsing of light as it travels, similar to how your heart beats over time. For example, as this trion ray is coming towards you through the screen, the purple ripples that are created by the 432 hertz sound encapsulate this single pulse of light. Then by Pythagorean intervals of the 432, it is able to control the compression of the hole until a new pulse begins to expand. So, if all the sciences, physics, math, geometry, etc., can be distilled down and simplified to vibration, and music is vibration, then I think we should go back to understanding the principles of creation through music as the Pythagoreans once endeavored. Remembering that this concept is probably one of the most reoccurring topics you will ever find when examining the philosophies of our ancient past. Pythagoras, the Greek mathematician and astronomer, is credited for originating the music of the spheres theory. It states that there are musical intervals, or mathematical ratios, found in the distance and size of the planets and in their movements around one another, which is said to mimic ballet movements. Pythagoras spent over 22 years studying with the great teachers of ancient Kemet, or what is known as Egypt today. Upon his return to Europe, he founded a school in Italy to teach mathematicians and philosophers about how the fundamental principle of creation is founded on the understanding of harmony in music. He had well over 2,500 students at his school, and even Galileo used the principles that Pythagoras taught as a base to develop his theory. The book of nature is written in mathematical symbols. Pythagoras's ancient theories are just as relevant today as they were 3,000 years ago. He is most famous for his discovery of the formula to find the length of the sides of any right angle triangle, which is known as the Pythagorean theorem, which today plays a key role in our architecture and geometric sciences. Many other philosophers believed and taught for thousands of years that the key to this musical universe is in the science of numbers. Bitcoin zu lernen. 
en este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy bajo, económico. At the moment the price of Bitcoin is very low, economic. Im Moment ist der Preis von Bitcoin sehr tief. Sería el momento ideal para invertir. Hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Would be the ideal moment to invest. Today is April 15th, 2015. Es wäre der ideale Moment zu investieren. Heute ist der 15. April 2015. El 27 de marzo 2015 he publicado en mi canal de YouTube Vanos Enigma el primer video sobre hashtag BTC4 explicando cómo me vino esta idea. On March 27th of 2015, um, I published my for the first video about hashtag BTC4 in my channel YouTube Vanos Enigma explaining how I got the idea. Am 27. März 2015 habe ich in meinem YouTube-Channel Vanos Enigma den ersten den ersten Video über Hashtag BTC4 veröffentlicht und äh, erzählt, erklärt, wie ich diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die Idee besteht hauptsächlich in folgenden. folgendem. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. 10 o mínimo 10 o mejor 100. To print Bitcoin directions in paper. At least 10 or better 100. Bitcoin adressen in papier ausdrucken. Um, mínimo 10 o besser gleich 100. Y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann en jede Bitcoin adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero. And the next time you see again a person begging for money on the street. Und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas. And for your friends, of course. Und für deine Freunde natürlich. Oh, tal vez eh, de Probina en un restaurante. Or maybe a tip in a restaurant. Oder Trinkgeld im Restaurant. Bueno, a la hora de imprimir también copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin. De direcciones de Bitcoin. When you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin Adressen druckt, auch die, uh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Address Schlüsseln, um, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de abril 2015, escribir la fecha más plus cuatro años, eh, igual 
15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015, plus, plus four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin eh, en estos cuatro años yo lo vuelvo a tener, tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in this, um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. Und dann erklärst du den Leuten, ciao, das ist der private Schlüssel. Ähm, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin. Wenn du äh, bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld, Bitcoin, nicht raustust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma, das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender, cómo funciona Bitcoin. This way, you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. In mi video an When I first heard this flat earth subject, I dismissed it without even giving it a second thought. But more recently, at the beginning of 2015, I ran across a few flat earth videos again. And while looking into the fake moon photos circulating around, I saw that people were claiming that the images from earth from space were fake as well. Pretty soon the flat earth subject became viral online. And after looking at the Apollo missions one night and coming to the conclusion that they were nothing more than a huge con game, it jarred my memory about something. And for a very specific reason, I decided to look deeply into the flat earth without just dismissing it blindly as so many do. Why did I look into it this time? Well, I do pray for knowledge and wisdom and discernment, but maybe the recent Apollo footage I watched helped. However, I live near a very large lake, Lake Ontario, and I happen to remember going to the beach as a kid and looking across the lake and seeing New York State coast off in the distance. I never ever thought anything about it ever, except I remember it being there when I went to the beach. Now, I've been to that beach a hundred times over the years, and once this topic gained more prominence in early 2015, the first video I saw explained the curvature of the Earth and what it's supposed to be in inches per mile. And it resonated with me because I remember that I could see clear across the lake to the other coast, something that broke all the sphere Earth rules. So with NASA fakery on my mind and the memory of seeing this coastline that supposedly was too far below the horizon for me to be able to see it due to the curvature of the Earth, I re-examined the Flat Earth Theory. And as unbelievable as it seemed, it started to make a lot of sense, especially since I did distinctly remember being able to see that far coast basically any time I was at my local beach. And as I've said, I've been there hundreds of times over the years. But even so, I went back to the beach recently and stood at the shore. I looked south and guess what? I could see the New York State coastline just like I remember. Now I googled the distance and it was approximately 36 miles. I learned what the curvature of the Earth is supposed to be exactly at that distance. And according to the people that believe in the sphere, and I found out that the coast should have been buried below my ability to see it by almost 900 feet. That part of the New York State coast had a top elevation of less than 300 feet. So that left at least a huge 600 foot discrepancy. And even more because I could see some of the height of the far shore. Was something really wrong with the reality that they've been selling us ever since we were born? Well, I ended up becoming a little fixated on proving or disproving the concept. And at first, I truly thought disproving the flat earth would be rather easy. I thought there had to be a reasonable explanation why I could see so far beyond the so-called curve barrier. I learned about light refraction and superior mirages. I learned about perspective and horizons. I learned about how our eyes work. I viewed dozens of similar experiences on YouTube. 
I listened to experts and people who thought they had logical but spherical explanations. In fact, I tried for a few months to debunk the concept and just couldn't. The more I looked into it, the more sense it made and the less likely that the sphere model we've been spoon-fed since birth was a reality. It's just flat out wrong. And as more people shared their experiences and proofs online, it only added to my growing, pretty much unwavering belief that the world is not what we've been told. And learning about how our eyes work and how perspective work helps a lot with understanding sunrises and sunsets and ships disappearing hull first at sea and other supposed sphere earth proofs. I can't say for certain what shape the earth is or how big it is, or if there's an Antarctic ring or a barrier beyond it, or if it's an infinite plane. Maybe everything we theorize is not complete. There are so many possibilities that it blows the mind, and the flat earth has no real complete standard model because it's all based on us finding out things for ourselves. We agree on the facts and certain basics, but the rest is only hypothetical even if it seemingly makes sense. And as the evidence mounts for both the flat earth and against the sphere, I wanted to create a special place where folks can learn and share what they've learned with other supporters. Differences of opinion are certainly going to come forth and should be expressed openly. But remember that the goal of my videos and their corresponding threads is to provide the opportunity to use each of us to learn and grow in any area that any of us has a problem in. If there is a thing you can't understand, then ask. Someone will have an opinion and we can go from there. If you have a point to make against what is considered an accepted flat earth fact, please provide any relevant links or supporting proofs or videos. I am currently under the impression that the entire space program, even low Earth orbit and all that is there, is really just a sleight of hand trick by a group of illusionists that have swindled the public, the governments of the world, the media, and us into believing a lie. Everybody, a small group of corporations and cabals have almost complete control over the entire financial, educational, high-level governmental and media systems, leaving it up to real armchair scientists and normal people that can critically think and recreate experiments themselves to independently prove or disprove prove any accepted line of thought about our reality. Look, I ain't the smartest man on the flat earth, but I ain't no dummy. I'm educated and I never ever questioned or ever thought of an alternative to a sphere earth until this year. It never entered my mind to question this part of our reality at all, ever. But now I question everything. I'm a Christian and I think I see the big picture. Thanks, Thanks for watching my video. If you'd like to see more proof against the heliocentric model and proof against the sphere, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if there's anything you disagree with, Make sure you leave a note below explaining exactly why. Remember folks, follow the golden rule. God loves you. We'll talk soon.